Greetings everyone, welcome back to the channel. Every so often in American politics, we have a champion of the people rise to popularity because they create and support legislation that aligns with their community's values and our mission as a nation. They are authentic, calculated, and operate in the best interest of their constituents. They value the Constitution and the civil liberties of all Americans. They want to see Americans succeed and thrive within a free society. They want a legal system that is fair, promotes transparency, and holds public officials accountable. I'm just kidding, that literally never happens. And it certainly isn't happening in Florida nowadays because recently Senate Bill 184 passed its final committee stop in the Florida legislature. On ATA, I've made it a point to stay away from discussing the politics of police interactions and the law in general because I feel like it would corrupt the credibility and objectivity of the channel. But like I've said in previous episodes, this channel is not ATA and you will be hearing my opinion on topics that I wouldn't normally discuss on the main channel. And just like on ATA, I don't expect you all to agree with what I say, and I invite you all to disagree with me in the comments and as always, draw your own conclusions about whatever we discuss here. One thing I think you should know about me though is that I don't identify with any particular political party. I recognize that there are radical politicians on both ends of the political spectrum, and I take them all with a grain of salt. Honestly, I don't feel as though my values are truly represented by anyone in politics at the moment, and I think many Americans out there feel the same way. So I said all that to say that whenever you hear me criticize a piece of legislation or a politician, it's just my opinion. There's no political agenda at play here and I'm not on anyone's team. I'm just trying to call it how I see it and you can take that for whatever it's worth. So Senate Bill 184 was introduced by Republican Senator Brian Avila and he told WFSU News that it was not intended to keep people from recording or monitoring police and other first responders, but to give them a safe area to do their jobs. So let's just take a look at what the bill actually says. It is unlawful for a person after receiving a warning not to approach from a first responder who is engaged in a lawful performance of a legal duty to violate such warning and approach or remain within 14 feet of the first responder with the intent to interrupt, disrupt, hinder, impede, or interfere with the first responder's ability to perform such duty, threaten the first responder with physical harm, or harass the first responder by interfering with the first responder performing such duty. So to say that again without all the legal jargon, they're basically trying to make it illegal to get within 14 feet of an officer while they're out on a traffic stop or any other official duty. But one interesting aspect of this this law is that they use the term first responder so that they can also include non-police personnel. The law provides a specific definition for first responder that includes law enforcement, correctional probation officers, firefighters, and emergency medical care providers. This is interesting because a major aspect of the law is that the accused has to be warned before they can actually be arrested for committing this crime. So it makes me question whether non-police first responders could be held liable for potential constitutional violations if they fail to properly warn someone or they get someone arrested who didn't actually violate the language of the law. I could see situations where non-police first responders attempt citizens arrests under this statute and that could certainly be a legal mess. Who knows what kind of situations this law could create by involving first responders who are not trained to interact with the public in an authoritative capacity. Senator Avila tried to put this into perspective perspective by saying, quote, Imagine that in a pressure-packed situation that you are responding to in a matter of minutes where lives are literally at risk, I think 14 feet is an adequate enough buffer or space or distance for those law enforcement or medical professionals to work. And again, this is after giving a warning. So let's talk about the whole 14 feet buffer zone aspect of this bill for a moment. As of right now, I'm not aware of any higher court cases that have established a specific distance that must be kept from police officers. And I can think of a lot of different situations where this could be abused or misinterpreted. I mean, just speaking practically, 
realistically, who is going to be the arbiter of when someone comes within 14 feet of a first responder? Are all first responders going to be trained on how to measure exactly 14 feet by sight, or are they expected to carry around tape measures to whip out in case they happen to run into an unruly citizen? I just don't see this working in any practical sense because it's going to be next to impossible to determine if someone actually came within 14 feet of a first responder. Not only is this bill impractical and unenforceable, it is also likely unconstitutional and it will face a myriad of legal challenges if it ever gets signed into law. And first of all, the language in this bill is incredibly vague. If someone were to be convicted under this bill, it would have to be proven that they disrupted a first responder with intent, which is something that's actually pretty difficult to prove in court. The concept of crimes with intent refers to the requirement that the perpetrator had a specific state of mind or intention at the time of committing the act. In the legal industry, this is often referred to as mens rea, which is Latin for guilty mind. For a crime to be committed with intent, the suspect must have consciously decided to go do something knowing the consequences of their actions and desiring an outcome that the law seeks to prevent. It is very difficult to prove what someone was thinking at any given time, and so prosecutors usually rely on circumstantial evidence to prove intent. Which means that a judge or jury will consider the facts of the case to determine whether someone acted with intent. And this is why it's so important to remain silent as often as possible and try to remain calm and cordial whenever you're interacting with the police. Because if you're charged with a crime that involves proving intent, a judge or jury will likely consider what you said and did on the scene to establish whether or not you had intended to commit a crime. Considering that the language of Senate Bill 184 specifically mentions a warning, it may be the case that the prosecutors might try to use the warning to establish intent. So for example, if an individual is warned to keep a distance from an ongoing emergency operation, but then deliberately moves closer and starts shouting at first responders, their actions might suggest an intent to disrupt. Now, I can't say whether or not that would actually hold up in court, but it's just something to consider. Sticking to the theme of vagueness here, the bill actually provides a definition for harassment in regards to first responders. It says, harass means to engage in a course of conduct directed at a first responder, which causes substantial emotional distress in that first responder. Substantial emotional distress. Like, what does that even mean? Every meaningful word that was used to define harassment is completely subjective. Substantial could mean any amount depending on the context. And emotional distress is a huge spectrum that ranges from a minor inconvenience to a life-threatening situation. There is no way to objectively define when someone is enduring substantial emotional distress because every person is different and everyone handles stress differently. This language would never survive legal scrutiny and I suspect that it will have to be amended to include more specific wording before it can have any chance of actually being passed into law. Another thing that should be considered is the potential for this bill to impose a prior restraint on the First Amendment rights of all Americans. A prior restraint basically refers to any time the government does something to limit speech before it even happens. So for example, if the government were to require approval before a publication could be made, that would be considered a prior prior restraint. Prior restraints have what is known as a chilling effect on the First Amendment, which means that individuals or organizations are usually deterred from engaging in protected speech or expression due to the fear of being fined or jailed. It's easy to see how being required to remain an arbitrary distance away from an officer at any given time could be seen as a prior restraint on free speech because citizens may be less likely to film the police if they're not sure if they're far away from them to legally record. Not only that, but this bill would give the police an opportunity to strategically place officers in a 14-foot grid that would effectively block any visibility of an encounter taking place. There are a ton of different ways that this could be abused to discourage or prevent citizens from exercising their rights. Like, what are you supposed to do if an officer comes marching toward you while you're recording from a safe distance? Is it then your responsibility to make sure that the officer doesn't come within 14 feet of you? Like I said, it's just impractical. For a restriction on free speech to be constitutional, it must be narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. And 
I'm sure you've all heard me say that many times on ATA. Now, I don't doubt that protecting first responders is a government interest, but the question is whether the bill is narrowly tailored so that it accomplishes this goal through the least intrusive means necessary. Considering the practical ambiguity of the 14 feet aspect of this bill, along with the vagueness and subjective nature of the bill's definition of harassment, I highly doubt this bill can be considered narrowly tailored. This is all not to mention the fact that pretty much every state already has a law regarding interfering with a first responder. It's usually called obstruction or hindering. So for example, let's take a look at California's obstruction law. It says that every person who willfully resists, delays, or obstructs any public officer, peace officer, or an emergency medical technician in the discharge or attempt to discharge of any duty of his or her office or employment can be charged. To me, it seems like this law accomplishes the same goal of making sure first responders are allowed to do their job without interference from the public, and it doesn't need to define any specific distance that must be kept. Even the state of Florida where this bill is introduced already has a statute that accomplishes the goal of SB 148. Florida Statute 843.02 criminalizes resisting an officer without violence, which is essentially what a person would be doing if they violated the language of SB 184 by getting within 14 feet of a first responder. Now, considering that Florida already has a law that criminalizes the very same conduct as this bill, with language that is much less vague and overreaching, it will be difficult to argue that this bill is narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. As you can probably tell, I'm not a fan of this piece of legislation, and I'm not alone in that sentiment. When this bill was posted to Reddit a couple of weeks ago, there were some interesting comments that I think are worth sharing. The top comment on the post said, that's going to be a First Amendment challenge pretty quick, and a user replied with, and as long as they drop the charges before the trial, the victim will have no way to challenge this law other than filing an expensive and time-consuming lawsuit. Call me crazy, but victims shouldn't be forced to wait years to get justice after the government does something illegal. But the user going south 85 brought up a great point about potentially challenging the bill by saying, you don't have to be charged to challenge this law. As soon as this law is passed, the ACLU or IJ or any of the plethora of organizations will bring suit on behalf of an auditor, cop watcher, or any person who can claim that this law is likely to cause them not to use their rights under the First Amendment. This will be sufficient standing and injury to bring suit in federal court. And I completely agree. If this bill does actually make it into law, it will likely be challenged immediately by a civil rights organization and be tied up in a legal battle for a long time at the very least. But there's still a chance that some version of this bill could be written into law and even introducing a bill like this invites further legislation aimed at reducing the public's ability to record law enforcement. And then we have the user Cosmo 1313 coming in with an absolute zinger to summarize how this bill was probably written. Florida Man says, what unconstitutional bullshit law can I write today? And this comment pretty much sums up my opinion on this bill. It's just wild to me that we have elected officials out there who think that this kind of legislation is what they should be focusing their time and energy on. Not to mention the fact that these are supposed to be individuals who were elected to uphold the Constitution, not challenge it at every turn. And honestly, this looks like a play for voters in my opinion. I don't know much about Florida politics in particular, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed that politicians are doing everything they can to capitalize on the radicalization of our society. And this bill is just another way for Senator Avila to make sure everyone knows which team he's on for the next election cycle. I doubt he ever considered the constitutionality of this bill, and he probably introduced it knowing that it was going to fail. And thankfully, this bill still has a long way to go before it can become a law. It still has to go before the floor vote, then consideration in the second chamber, before eventually going to the governor's desk for a signature or a veto. So we won't be seeing any legal challenges anytime soon, but if this bill somehow makes its way through the Florida legislature, that will offer an opportunity for a lawsuit. Unsurprisingly enough, this is not the first time a bill like this was introduced. In July of 2023, the Arizona Capital Times reported that a federal judge in Arizona struck down a law with very similar language to the bill we are discussing today, except that the buffer 
buffer zone that it was trying to establish was only 8 feet. The ACLU challenged House Bill 2319, which former Arizona Governor Doug Ducey signed into law, claiming that it violated the First and Fourteenth Amendments. And just as I mentioned earlier, Judge John Tucci concluded that, quote, the law prohibits or chills a substantial amount of First Amendment protected activity and is unnecessary to prevent interference with police officers given other Arizona laws in effect. Republican Senator John Kavanaugh initially sponsored the legislation and he told the Arizona Capital Times that he vowed to reintroduce a revised version of the bill. So the foundation has already been set for a bill like this to be struck down in court and I'm sure that SB 184 will share a similar fate to Arizona's House Bill 2319, but that's no excuse to sit around and do nothing about this. I'm not sure how many of my viewers are from Florida, but if you are, then you should consider calling or emailing your representatives and let them know how you feel about SB 184. Even if you're not in Florida, you should keep an eye out for your representatives sponsoring legislation like this because apparently it's becoming a trend. Well, that's about all I've got for you today. I just wanted to kind of bring this to your attention because I think it's something that we should all be vigilant about. Let me know what you think about the format of this video because it's a little bit different from what I've been doing in the past. This one was just me talking to the camera and talking to you. We didn't have an actual video to review today, so let me know if you like that or not in the comments. As always, any likes or subs are greatly appreciated. We're so close to 100k. But that's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.